Ms. Anthony, you claim you had a short-term relationship with the defendant, Mr. Pouchot, who was initially excited when you told him you were pregnant. But now you are furious he is denying your eight-month-old son, Matthew. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Pouchot, you say you've never taken Ms. Anthony seriously, and she herself confessed to sleeping with other men during the time of conception. You believe the only reason Ms. Anthony is pinning her child on you is because you married someone else. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Anthony, what has Mr. Pouchot done for your child? Not a damn thing, Your Honor. Nothing. Not no. Not a diapers, not wipes, not formula, That's not only anything. because she told me that the child wasn't I'm getting to that. I told him that, I did tell him that the, the child was not his, but, Your Honor, he, he was not in a very good place in his life. He was partying, and I was partying too, but once I found out I was pregnant, I put all those things aside and, and did what I had I... to. And so, wait, did you tell him he was the father at first or that yes, he wasn't? he was there when I took the pregnancy test. But she told me that I wasn't the father. Later she on, I did tell him he wasn't the father. her ex-boyfriend was the father, that she was pregnant before she met me. And now you say he's denying the baby. Uh, but you admit to telling him he wasn't the father. Um, yes, ma'am, I did. And uh, the, I understand that was me being in the wrong. That was 100%. Most of this is my fault. Take me back. I want to understand the nature of this relationship. Were you all dating? Were you committed? Um, Boyfriend and girlfriend? We, well, I was sitting at the bus stop, and he walked up to me and asked me about one of my tattoos, and we just clicked from there. We were amazing when we were together. We didn't fight very much. We never argued. And then I went away for a little while, and it just got... We had mainly a party relationship, to be honest with you. Like, that's, that's what our relationship consisted of. It, no, we didn't argue and all that, but neither one of us were ready to be in a relationship nor have a child. But it was a sexual relationship. I, I, yes, it was. Were you using protection? No, no, Your Honor, we were not. And he was there, so that's why I'm mainly upset. You were there for the 25 minutes of pleasure. Well, it's been nine months. It's been nine months and I bought every diaper. I bought every well, if I was formula. Told I've that done it all. And I've tried... Uh, well, if you were told... If I was told there was me, a possibility that um, it was mine in the beginning, I would have been around. I have, I've, I've tried to contact him on multiple occasions. I have text messages right here. I'd like to see that. That I've attempted to... And that's from his spouse. That's not from him, because he blocks me and doesn't okay, allow me so to talk Okay, so now you all were in this relationship. I'll get to that in a moment. You all were in this relationship, and it basically was not committed. No. And you were having sex without protection. Yes, ma'am. At some point, you figure out you're pregnant. You take a test, and he's with you. Yes, ma'am. But when you took the test and it came back positive, you immediately told him you're not the father? Oh, no, not immediately. All right, tell me what happened then. I, um, well, I we went to bed that did. night, and I laid there all night and was like, I can't do this. My son deserves better, or my child, at the point I didn't know it was a boy, but my child Actually, deserves better than this. I don't know what to do. After well, she took the test, she looked me dead in my face and was like, it's not yours. That is a lie, and you know it. Don't be lying up in this courtroom. I ain't got no reason to lie. Uh-uh, no. Let me finish what. But I, I laid down and I thought about it, and I realized that this man ain't gonna do nothing but party. This man ain't gonna take care of me or my child. He ain't gonna do nothing for me. Her so I decided to, what I thought was a good away. decision for my child. It was not the correct decision, and I understand that now. I was young. I didn't understand. I was I was scared. Whenever she I told thought me I was that doing the, the best thing for that beautiful baby right there. And so once you felt like he was not going to stand up for the child and take care of the child, you decided to tell him he's not even the father. Yes. And so. Were you having sex with Ms. Anthony during the window of conception, Mr. Pusho? Uh, I don't know what the window of conception was, so honestly, I don't have an answer for that, Your Honor. Okay, that's yes, fair. Yes, he was. I have, a, I have pictures with dates on them right I'd here. like to see that, please. Jerome, will you hand me her evidence? And that was... That was, that was actually um, April... It was the, the first week of April was my conception time. That was April 4th All is right. when that picture... First was picture, you two look... Happy together. We were. Cute couple. April 4th, 2015. Is that the window of conception? Yes, ma'am. That's actually the day, the highest, uh, con when they give you the week window. Another yep. photo of you two together, April 21st, 2015. Still yes, in the month of April. 
And yet another one, April 8th, 2015. And all this is after she told me that she was pregnant with no. another man's child no. and I wasn't the father. I was trying to stay no, around. No, those were before, honey. Don't you sit there and lie. The that April, that April 8th and April 4th her. were before. That no. middle one was after. Because I those met you in late March. No, actually late February and you supposedly got pregnant early I, March. No, I did not supposedly get pregnant early March. My due date was... December 18th. You need to learn some math, baby. We're going to take you back to high school. All right. How did this relationship end, Miss Anthony? He cheated on me with his spouse now. That is how that happened. Actually, and he begged I cheated me to stay on my spouse with you. And now you're married, Mr. Pouchel. Yes, ma'am. Happily. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Y'all, okay. Never mind. I don't have those text messages <laughs> where you were going to get a divorce two weeks ago. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Mr. Pouchot, you have brought a witness. Yes, ma'am. And I would uh, like to have Jerome escort the witness into the courtroom. I'd like to hear from them. Yes. Thank you, Jerome. You're welcome. <laughs> look at that baby. How are you going to deny him? He looks, look at his nose. I only deny him look because at his you eyes. Wasn't mine. I know, and I'm sorry for that. That was me, but look so, at him. How are you going to tell him that, that he don't look like you? Look at his smile. On the other side. If he's mine, I'm going to take care of him. Thank you for joining us, sir. Please state your name for the court. Michael Pouchot. Mr. Pouchot, you are what relation to Mr. Pouchot? He's the my husband. I have, he is your husband. Yes, ma'am. I have proof of that. Please present it to the court. <laughs> All right, this is in fact your marriage certificate. Yes, certificate ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. And so you all are married. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma I would like to know what you know about this situation. Honestly, um, Your Honor, I wasn't there, obviously, when they did what they did. But I was told from Miss Anthony herself, my husband had gone away for a couple months, and I was holding down things at home. I was holding him down where he was. And I needed a little bit of help because I ran short. I called Miss Anthony. She met me down, in fact, at the very same place that they met, at the bus terminal. Got a little couple dollars off of her, whatever I needed to get from my husband. At the time, he wasn't my husband. That is the point where Miss Anthony told me to my face, the baby is not Harold's. That is true. I did say that. You have nothing to worry about. I am not going to pursue this. This baby belongs to my ex-boyfriend. And you like say that. period. You you say that is true. That is true. I did say that. I was I was. You have to understand where I was coming from as a mother. You have to. And it was wrong of me. The decision I made was not right in any way, shape, or form. I understand that. But at that point in time, I thought that I was doing what was best for my child. I thought that I was making the best decision because he wasn't ready to be a parent. Actually, you, my husband can attest to this. That. All I want to be is a parent. Like, I've, I've helped raise my nieces, my nephews, and I, I've been sober for 16 months now. Close That's to That's good. Yes. I'm proud of you for that. That is really That's good. That's great. He, is, he has been clean for close to 16 months, no thanks to your relationship with him. I know that was wrong of me. We partied together, and I messed up his sobriety, and that was wrong of me. So please do and not I paint said, you my know husband what? I need... to be a monster. I am not making your husband to be a monster, baby. I am not. What we're trying to figure out is, is he a father? Yes. Th see, that That's is what, what I want to know. That's what we want to know. Well, let's find out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> when Matthew was born, Miss Anthony, at that time, I I'm so confused. You've told him he was, he wasn't, he was. I'm, at the time the child was born, were you telling him he was the father? I told him he wasn't. He wasn't. Time. I was so he wasn't present for the birth. No, he was not, and I feel wrong. I stripped him of that, and that was wrong. The man that was, was present for the birth signed the birth certificate. Yes, ma'am. He is who I was told was the father. And so there was another man at the hospital. Yes, yes ma'am. Mm. Did he think Matthew was his child? No, ma'am. He knew the whole time that he was not the father. That's not what he was posting on Facebook. Yes, because we decided to not go public with it. We decided to keep it between us. And Isn't Facebook family. public? Yes, I it mean, we is. decided to not Thank let everyone you. know that he wasn't Thank the you. father. Because we were trying to keep... We were trying to be a family. didn't work out because I... For it whatever did. reason. And I, 
I'm just, I felt guilty and I'm trying to do the right thing by my son and by you didn't want to quit partying, that's why. I, I'm done partying. Honestly, if you, if you take I, a look at everything, the messages you've sent to Harold, the, the phone calls, everything that you've stated, the baby wasn't his. The baby, and you tell I me know. the baby wasn't his. You're you have this smiling, happy image of you and this other man holding this child on Facebook. You are right. I am not arguing with you about that. All uh, right, so Ms. Anthony, you submitted some messages to the court. Yes, the, from I'd like Mike. to review. That would be Mr. Pouchot. Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Yo, he asked you nicely, your kid ain't his. If you message us again threatening to take him for child support because you can't have your way, I will contact a lawyer. Take your stupid blank on somewhere. Next message. Stop messaging my husband. I'm 35 years old, college educated, and can make your life hell. Don't make me be this way. I'm not a monster, but keep messing with my man, and I have no choice but to show you a side of me that I don't like to pull out. I, I will say this was All a right. point. Yes, ma'am, Your Honor, I did write those messages, but they were in response to five messages in a row unanswered from my husband. She messaged my husband first on Facebook. Those messages were forwarded to me, and he asked me to ask her to stop. And I asked her several times nicely, please stop messaging him. And instead of stopping messaging him, she would message him and say, why do you got to get your husband involved? Well, I'm so just saying that's this, when this I lashed is, out. If it's between us, this is our child, poss uh, possibly our child, then in it's the between us. You weren't there with a flashlight, so therefore... But now, wait a minute. Ms. Ms. Anthony, you said before there were no other choices, and now you say if this is possibly our child. Oh, no, there's no other choice. I'm saying possibly. That's what they're saying is possibly that he's not his. If you look at my son, look at him. I'll give you. There are some similarities, but you cannot take away from the fact that you have openly declared to people that right. he may not be Harold's child. I you have also declared to other people of your sexual trysts before Harold and trysts? after to include a three-way right after your relationship with my husband. Yep, you're right. Yeah, that did happen. Boom. I, I'm going to be honest. Boom. I'm not going to lie. That did happen, but that happened before and not after. That happened before and not after. Then she came up to be pregnant and told me that it might be that gentleman. How do you forget a threesome? I, I was, uh, Your Honor, I was very... That was a very, very bad time in my life. I was very... I partied very hard at that point in time until I found out I was pregnant. And that child right there is another part of the reason I got sober as well, though. And I thank you for that. I mean... I make $800 every week. I wash dishes, and I've just been waiting to figure it out. And so what are you hoping for? The best for him. If he's not mine, I hope he does figure out who his father is. If he is mine, he's going to have the best of everything. Wow. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. Are you hoping that you are Matthew's biological father? I see this makes you very emotional. It means a lot to you. It does. Tell the court why. I, I was raised in foster care. Like, I'm not a dirtbag, and I don't want him to see me as one if he is my child. Like, I've been in over 40 different foster homes. Like, I've been in and out of the system. Like, I don't want that for him. He doesn't deserve that. He didn't ask to be brought into this world. If he's mine, we consummated, we made him. It's our job to give him everything he needs and take care of him. Like, Very yeah, well me. said. Ms. Anthony, um, you maintain that you believe Mr. Pouchot is your child's biological father. Yes, ma'am. Well, let's see what the DNA has to say. Jerome, the envelope, please. Hold my hand. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Anthony versus Pouchot, when it comes to eight-month-old Matthew, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Pouchot, you are the father.
That's the first time I've seen you smile today, Mr. Pouchot. This is all he really ever wanted is to have a child of his own and specifically a son. So on his end and on my end, like basically makes a child my stepchild. It does. It does. I work. So that means I, I make be... decent money and this I can't give him a child. Mr. Pouchot, have you ever seen your little boy? I've not he even hasn't. met him yet. Have I you ever? Have... I haven't got to hold him or anything. He hasn't. You like, haven't? Like, this is probably the best day of my life right now, to be honest. To be Oh, well, to let, look, let this court make it even better. Ms. Anthony, would you mind if Matthew meets his daddy in my chambers? I have no problem with that. I would actually enjoy that very much. Yeah. Beautiful. Ms. Miller, you're here to prove to your ex-boyfriend, Scotty Rasmussen, that he is not the father of your three-year-old daughter, Zaylee Rasmussen. Yes, Your Honor. You claim you've been in an ongoing court battle over custody and have petitioned the court several times for a DNA test, all of which have been denied. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Rasmussen, you claim the real reason Ms. Miller is denying your Zaylee's father is because she hates you. Yes, Your Honor. You say you've been there for your daughter her entire life, and you're here today to prove you are Zaylee's father. Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Rasmussen, why is Ms. Miller saying you're not Zaylee's father? Your Honor, I believe it's just out of pure hatred. She just doesn't want me to have visitation. Uh, I drive 100 and about 60 miles every other weekend just to pick up my daughter and drop her off. Over the, that's about 10,000 miles. That's wear and tear on my car. She doesn't have a driver's license. She doesn't have any way to bring her to me. She doesn't have any way to meet me halfway. You say she hates you. She, yeah, she why hates would, Why does she hate you? She hates me because at the end of the relationship when things got rocky, I'll admit it, I did go to another woman. I'll be the first to admit that. You know, it was my mistake. She, Is she, that true, Miss Miller? No. It's not? No. Tell it's me what you believe to be true in this situation. Yes, I was very mad at him for being a cheater. He cheated on me through pretty much our whole relationship. No, I do not hate him because of that. I lost my respect for him, yes. He says this is about visitation, too. He loves his daughter, but you don't want him to have the visitation. Is that true? Yes, Your Honor. Why is that? Because I believe that the only reason why he wants the visitation is to claim her on his taxes. That, 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 is, that, that is the furthest thing from the truth. I, I, I want my visitation because my daughter means the world to me. I want to be, be in her life as much as I possibly can. I mean, if he's driving 160 miles each way every other weekend, the money he would get in his taxes, he's spending in gas. I'm, I'm paying my child support. I have my child support payment payments right here, plus an additional $3 fee, plus an additional $60 annual fee just to pay my child support. You pay $50 a week. Just under $50 a week plus that $3 with every check, plus another $60 every year to the, st to the state. And that's not very much to get what she needs. Is I it, mean, is at it, the end it, of the is month... Is it enough to buy her clothes so she doesn't have to wear cut-off sweatpants and the same T-shirt every time I pick her up? I do that because I don't want... Sh is it's it, just is what it is. Is it enough money to buy her underwear so you don't got to keep putting her in diapers at I have underwear old? for her. And she is not in diapers, she is in pull-ups, she is in training right now. She, she, she is having problems. She is But not what he's saying, Ms. Miller, is it's clearly not about money if he's paying his child support. And he also spends money coming to see her. What is this really about for you? Why is it you don't want him involved in this child's life? Because I still believe that she, he is not hers. Okay, and, and listen, I, that's what we're here for. I want to get down to the bottom of the truth. Yeah. You don't believe he's her biological father? Yes, Your Honor. So explain to me why. When she was conceived, she was conceived in March of 2011, he wasn't even in the same state. He was in Vegas. And at that time in March, I wasn't even with him. I was with somebody else because he broke up with me because he cheated on me. I I'll be the first to admit it was a, it was a mistake. Okay. We've gotten the fact that you two have an on and off relationship that has infidelity woven through. I understand that. Ms. Miller, you were stating to the court that you were intimate with someone else and you believe that you were intimate with that other person during the time Zaley was conceived and Mr. Rasmussen was all the way in Las Vegas. Yes, Your Honor. But clearly at some point, Mr. Rasmussen either thought or was 
informed that he was her biological father because he is paying child support, he's still driving 160 miles each way, and she has his last name. Yes. Mr. Rasmussen, fill me in. At what point were you ever told that you were not her biological father? I believed I was, and still believe, I was the only bio, the biological father until about five or six months or so, give or take, after she was born. We were at family court, talking to the family court commissioner about custody and the things that go along with that, like where she'd be going to school, her doctor, and all that. And uh, Ms. Miller brings it up that uh, I could possibly not be the father because of another man that was involved, and she gave some date, I can't remember the specifics. What one of the uh, people we were talking to with the family court commissioner did the math and it turns out that would be a 10 month pregnancy and that, that don't make sense to me. Cause it was so far, it was so long ago. I was confused about the dates, but now that I went through both of our Facebooks, I went through all of my notes, all of anything that I wrote down and I figured out that she was conceived in March and it was a nine month Pregnancy. So, Mr. Rasmussen, up until Zaley was six months, five or six months old, you believed you were the only possible biological father. That is correct. We never, we never broke up. There was never any that I can recall. There was never any split there. There was the a relationship was on and off in a sense, but we never. But by that time, she was born, so she already had your name. She already had my Did name. Did you sign the birth certificate? That is correct. Your I name's just, on the birth certificate. I have Jerome, that right. will you hand me that, please? I have that right here. My name is on that birth certificate. So you're on the birth certificate. Yep, I was at. I, you're I, at the birth. I was at the birth. I was at every single doctor's appointment. When Zaley was born, you were at a doctor's appointment. I was at home because I had to work that day. I was at my. I was at my job as a cashier. I got, a, I got a phone call and I answered it. They said she was going into labor. I said, okay, I hung up the phone. I quickly finished up as fast as I could with that particular customer. I turned off my checkout light, told the next customer in line that something came up. I either had to go to another line. I went up to my manager, my immediate supervisor, said, hey, I gotta go, my girlfriend's in labor. I went home, quickly changed my clothes, and I drove about 45 miles through a winded, wooded road in Wisconsin in December, mind you, so it was about a foot of snow on the ground. I, I made it to that hospital in less than 35 minutes. I beat her to the hospital. And I was there from the moment she got there to the moment she was discharged. I, I called my boss at work and said, hey, I gotta take some days off. I don't care if you fire me or whatever, but I gotta stay here, my daughter's being born. That's, that's a lie. <clears throat> After she was born. That was an amazing story. You say that was a lie? Yes, it is. <laughs> How do you remember it? After she was born, he was gone. He ran out of the room. I didn't see him for 20 minutes after that. While I was in labor, he was sitting on one of those hospital cot beds on his computer in the corner, not paying attention to me on, in his own little bubble. I admit I was on my computer, but that was far from it. I had to find a way to calm myself because I was so excited. I was so excited to be a father. How often does a man beat the woman to the hospital? <laughs> Do you dispute, Ms. Miller, that he was excited about this beautiful little girl being born? I really didn't see much excitement. You didn't? No. Did he beat he just... you to the hospital? Yes, because I had to wait for my aunt to come get me. What was the problem exactly? You, you let him sign the birth certificate. I gave that be... I gave my daughter my last name. Because we were engaged. And I thought we were going to get married. I thought we were going to have a happy life and raise our daughter together until about three months after she was born, one of his friends told me everything that he was doing throughout his, our entire relationship, cheating on me, going to multiple places to meet multiple girls. And after that, I was just done. Where is this other possible father? I'm not even quite sure. After we broke up, he changed his number, he moved, he pretty much disappeared. I have tried to find him, I have tried to get a hold of him, and I can't find him. But you keep saying, Mr. Rasmussen cheated, he did this, he did that. And as wrong as that may be, you also slept with somebody else. We weren't even dating then. I was single at that time, because he was with this other lady and I was the side chick, which I didn't even really know about. All of this is happening, and this man is continuing to step up to the plate like he has 
a daughter on the way, like he has a, a newborn baby girl. Even through the breakup, you all are making custody and visitation arrangements, but you know deep down there's another possible father. Yes, Your Honor. Why wait so long to tell him? I told him the first time that we had a court date, but the courts threw it out. Even DNA before test. you tell anybody in court, what about just telling him? I want to understand that. Why was it that you were keeping this information so close to your hip until five, six months after Zaylee was born? The more she grew up, the more I started noticing more of her features, the more she started looking like the other guy. She that... looks exactly like I did when I was three years old. I have a picture of me when I was three and a picture of her from just the other Let day. Let me see that. Will you hand that to me, Jerome? Believe it or not, when I was three years old, I had blonde hair. And so this is a picture of Zaylee on the left and you as a child, Mr. Rasmussen, on the right. That is correct, Your Honor. And you say you see a distinct similarity. Yes, I do. Do you see it, Ms. Miller? Mm-mm. You don't? I don't. You feel like Zaylee looks like the other gentleman you yes. are intimate with? Look, our, we even have the same chin. I'm just noticing that now. Our chin looks exactly the same. We have the same dimples. You are insisting that Mr. <coughs> Rasmussen is not the child's father, and yet you're receiving child support from Mr. Rasmussen. Have you petitioned the court to have Mr. Rasmussen taken off of child support? I have told him a couple times that if he would just sign her over to me, that he wouldn't have to pay child support anymore. I'm not gonna do that. Just... I'm, not, I'm not gonna give up that easy. I'm fighting for what I know is mine. Mm. I know she's mine. So, Mr. Rasmussen, what type of visitation do you have right now? Right now, it's um, every other weekend, but I've had to jump through so many hoops to get to this point. At first, it was that fly-by-night, just make, make a date whenever you want to and, you know, go from there. But obviously, that didn't work. And then sometime after that, we started out where I had to sit with Miss Miller and my daughter at a park for four hours, once a week for four weeks. And then after that, I, had, I got her for four hours, once a week for four weeks by myself without her involvement. And then after that, I got her for one overnight a week for four weeks. And then after those four weeks, then I got what I have now. How is your relationship with Zaylee? Oh, it, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, every time I get her, we, I try to make the best I can out of it. Even if I don't have any money from, you know, having to put gas in the car and pay the child support and everything, we try to do as much as I, I try to do as much as I can with her, whether it be something as little as, you know, going to the park or going fishing or going to, a, you know, an amusement attraction. You know, every little memory at that age, you know, means more than anybody can possibly fathom. And I just try to make the absolute best out of what I can with what I have. So, Mr. Rasmussen, let me ask you, are you prepared? Have you prepared yourself either way? If this child is my biological child or if she isn't, have you thought about both alternatives? In a sense, yes. If it goes the way I'm hoping and I'm, I know in my heart that it will, that she is mine, I'm just gonna be overjoyed that all the, the drama and the fighting and all that kind of stuff is behind me. If it goes the other way, I don't think if I had all the time in the world, I could, you know, prepare myself for such a bombshell. I, I, don't, I don't think I'd be able to prepare myself for just how devastating that would be to, be to a, not only me, but my entire family. Jerome, I think it's time for the results. Okay. <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Miller versus Rasmussen, when it comes to three-year-old Zaley Rasmussen, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Rasmussen, you are not the father. Yeah! Yeah! Miss yeah! Miller. Be respectful. I'm sorry. Miss Miller. I'm sorry. That's a lot of nerve, considering the alternative is somebody that don't want nothing to do with you or your child. I'm sorry. That's a lot of nerve. <sighs> you just showed me where your priorities were right there. I'm sorry. Because I held out hope 
that you weren't just acting a fool because you so mad at him because he cheated on you that you would cheat your child out of a father. But that cheering you did, what you cheering? I'm a single mother with nobody that loves me on my child. What you cheering for? I'm not. No, you were. He is over here breaking down because he loves this child so much. I sit here day after day after day with women hoping a man would drive 16 miles to see their baby, much less 160 miles each way, and abide by a court order and sign a birth certificate and come day after day and week after week so they can grow visitation to have a relationship with a child. And you have no compassion for not just him, but for Zaylee. She's three years old. Now, he's not just gonna be heartbroken. We gotta break this news to her. And y'all over here cheering like it's a sport. This is this baby's life. And I ask you, where's this other man? I don't know. And you know he don't want nothing to do with you. Sitting up there cheering. Mr. Rasmussen, I am so sorry. I know this hurts you. Thank you, Your Honor. I don't know what I'm gonna do. She's my whole, my whole world. Everything I do is for her. I, she was the reason I went to work every day. Miss Childress, you have petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove to your fiance that he is the father of your three-month-old daughter, Isabella. You need today's DNA results in order to keep your family together. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Davis, you stand here in court hoping and praying that you are Isabella's biological father, but say you have medical evidence which may prove otherwise. And if that's not enough, the plaintiff's very own mother says you are not the father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Childress, explain why today's results are so important to you. So I can prove to my fiancé, my mother, my family, and not only his family, but everybody who doubts that that is his daughter. And I'm just ready for him to have that peace in his heart and in his mind to know that that is his little girl. Mr. Davis, you say you want nothing more. I see the tears in your eyes. Yes, Your Honor. I've been wanting to be a family man forever. And the day I found out that I was a dad, it changed my whole world. <laughs> and to know that I have a little girl in my life, but not knowing whether or not she's mine, it, it hurts. It hurts deep. It, all I wanted to do is to be a father, but I have got to know whether or not I am the father of that little girl. What does it feel like to live with that doubt? It hurts. It hurts dramatically that I had so much faith in Samantha and she broke that faith and it now broke my heart. So as you look at Isabella, those beautiful pictures of you, what goes through your mind? That I want to be with her the rest of my life, spending the rest of my life making sure that she didn't make the same mistakes I did in life, no matter what that takes. And if I'm lucky, maybe she'll still call me daddy. Ms. Childress? Yes, Your Honor? I have to take you back to a very difficult time because we need to discuss how we got here. So, your relationship. Take me back to your relationship during the window of time when Isabella was conceived. I had just moved out of my mother's home and moved back in with him. Our relationship, it has been rocky. There have been ups and downs. And I have stood by him through everything that has happened. And my, my doctor told me that that window of when I wrecked my car is the week I got pregnant. So, Mr. Davis, can you take me to the day you found out Miss Childress was pregnant? Yeah, um, I was uh, very excited when I found out she was pregnant. Um, I immediately went to the store. I wanted to make sure so I went to the store, bought five more tests. I made her, <laughs> I made her take every one of them, um, and they all come back positive. And you know, in my head, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have a little boy. I already had my mindset we were gonna have a little boy. So I was thinking football and touchdown. So, and uh, turns out we was having a little girl. So now it went from football to touchdown to tea parties and tutus. <laughs> and uh, and you. Know, 
excitement was there, but there was also fear now because I didn't know anything about little girls. I didn't know, okay, well, how do I change them? How do I take care of them? How do I do this? How do I do that? I call around, I ask family members and well, one thing led to another. I'm talking to family members and that's when the rumors start coming out. That's, uh, can you be specific about these rumors? What did you hear? Family members were telling me that she was talking to her exes again. And it, uh, it hurt, it hurt bad. And it definitely put doubt in my mind whether or not Isabella was even mine. And it really hurt, it hurt emotionally. It felt like I just lost my chance at the American dream. One thing led to another, we ended up splitting up. Uh, shortly after splitting up, not even a week later, she was living with her ex. I was not living with my ex, your honor. I was living with my mother. I had moved back in at home. And why does that upset you so? Because everybody's saying this to him and it's not true, none of it. Were you having sex with your ex? No, ma'am. I was not. Were you talking to him on the phone? Yes, ma'am, I was. But you yeah. thought there was more going on, Mr. Davis. I did. And people were telling you there was more going on. I Yes, they was. And I, that she was really living over there with him, but pretending like she was living with her mother. That's correct. <laughs> um, now, I'm not saying you're lying, Miss Childress, and you're so upset, but that scenario does sound more in line of what we hear in this courtroom. Yes, yes Your Honor. There's other things that made me doubt as well. Um, I have medical issues that suggest that I may not even be able to have children. Be specific. A um, few years ago, uh, quite a few years ago, I was 22, went to the doctor. Um, I felt testicular pain. Went to the doctor. Uh, I thought it was cancerous. Turns out it was not. Um, but he did, was able to tell me that I have a 45% chance or less to even have children. So what were the symptoms? What was happening? The pain was for one, and it happened over a period of years. Um, and also, um, my right testicle had shrunk down dramatically in size to an eighth of the original size. Your testicles shrink to one eighth of its size, and That's... the doctors tell you you may not be able to have kids. That's correct, Your Honor, yes. And that hurt more than anything, because I want nothing more than to have not only Isabella, but multiple children with Samantha. I plan on marrying this woman one day. Aww. I'd like to get more information concerning your medical condition. So I'd like to call on Dr. Jamila Gator. Jerome, can you please escort the doctor into the courtroom? Hello, Dr. Gator. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are here discussing the paternity of baby Isabella. You've been listening to the testimony. Mr. Davis has described a medical issue he's been experiencing where he says one of his testicles has been shrinking to almost one-eighth the size, and he's been experiencing pain. So as a result of this condition, Dr. Gator, do you believe there's a strong possibility that Mr. Davis may not be able to have children? The sperm is actually made inside of the testicular tissue. So if there's little testicular tissue, then that affects the sperm counts. Low sperm counts can definitely affect your ability to father a child. So this could very much play a role... Yes. ...in his ability to father children. Yes. But it is a possibility that he still could very well father a child, be Isabella's biological father. I mean, if the other testicle is completely normal, not doesn't have any damage or atrophy to it, it could function normal, and then it could make up for the lack of the other testicle that's atrophied. So hearing that, Mr. Davis, does that give you hope, or does that just confirm in your mind what you've already been told, which leads you to have this doubt? It gives me hope that that little girl could be mine because it only means the world if she is. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Gator. I really appreciate it. Thank Jerome, you. you may escort Dr. Gator. So now we've heard, Mr. Davis, that there is hope that this condition may not preclude you from fathering a child. But you say there is still more doubt. 
There is. Can and, you talk about that? It's uh, her mother, um, the day that she was in labor. After speaking with the nurses, about 30 minutes later, I get a phone call from her mother. Her mother had told me to stop calling the hospital that she has been on, put on a no info patient list. And that if I made any attempt to come to the hospital, that security B would be on standby to escort me off the premises. What? As yes. well as telling me that I was not the father that the other man was. Why would your mother say this? My mother hasn't, I guess, hasn't really liked him as much because of our rocky relationship and the issues we have had. But I'm, I'm hoping this will help in their relationship for my mom to finally have the peace <laughs> and let me have my family together, which is something I want more than anything in this world. Because <laughs> I can't wait to marry him. Well, I'd like to understand more about why a mother would basically <laughs> block her grandchildren from their potential father. Jerome, will you please escort Miss Heights into the courtroom, please? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hyge. <clears throat> Thank you. Ms. Hyge, we've heard some very concerning testimony. Yes, ma'am. Do you believe Mr. Davis is Isabella's biological father? Um, I'm really no. I don't I don't believe that. And and I have a reason. Um, <clears throat> right before she got back together with Mr. Davis, she was dating another gentleman. And I mean, it was very, very quick. She and this guy broke up and a week later she was with Mr. Davis. And then next thing I know, she's pregnant. Did she ever tell you the other guy was the father? She never, you know, she never said it, but I, sus I suspected they were, you know, having relations. No, so you're not, Your Honor. We were not at all. They were having relations. No. I'm scared to ask, how do you know? But I need to know, how do you know? Oh, she tells me everything. Right before they got back together, before she got pregnant, that's, you know, before I found out she was pregnant. Yeah, they were having relations. What is happening here? I have no idea, Your Honor. I couldn't even believe my mom would say that when none of that is true. Your Honor, I love my daughter. I really do. I really want to be able to believe her, but my daughter is a pathological liar. <laughs> <laughs> and the problem is, is that if it turns out that Mr. Davis is not the father of this baby and they break up, the baby is more than welcome to come stay with my house, but Samantha has burned her bridge and she's not allowed there. <laughs> what to believe. I really don't. I really don't. I really hope that he is. He's been nothing but good He to hopes baby. he is. She hopes he is. Mm -hmm. I hope he is. At this point, I'm just like, what in the world? How, how can life get this complicated? You all are so young. It's a mystery, yeah. I mean, really. And what if he isn't? Miss Childress, do you know who is? Yes, Your Honor, I would. So that means there is another possibility. I know that just took the air out of your sails, Mr. Davis, and I hated to bring you up to break you down. <laughs> But sometimes getting to the truth does that. If it's any consolation, he's a much better parent to Isabella. This just keeps getting worse and worse. And I love her, but I just can't, I can't honestly, honestly trust what she says to me. I can't trust nothing. <laughs> right now. Thank you. trust nothing but what's in this envelope because I know it's the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Jerome. There's too many stories. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Childress versus Davis, 
when it comes to three-month-old Isabella Childress. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Davis, you are the father. <laughs> Welcome to the family. <laughs> Welcome to the family. <laughs> Officially. Look at that smile. I haven't seen that all day. I love it. What a beautiful smile. You so happy, right? <laughs> How does it feel to know for certain? Can you put it into words? Oh, two twos and tea parties. <laughs> Daddy, you're gonna have nails painted, <laughs> toenails, everything. <laughs> this is a beautiful thing. And I was serious before I went to those results. There were so many stories, I couldn't figure out what to believe. And I'm just so grateful that all of you had the courage to come into this courtroom today so you can get down to the bottom of this for this beautiful little girl before she has to grow up and suffer through these types of questions and confusion because it's no way to live, is it? No, no. it's not.